All right, guys, so the reason that a elbow dominated arm action tends to produce a little bit more forward torso flexion is because of what's actually driving the movement. Um, this can be a feel for the thrower, um, but this is what I see happening, the difference that I see. So basically, in an elbow dominated arm action, if we were to set up in a static position here, where we're going to accelerate, right? If we're dominated by the elbow, or even by, you could look at it um, by your lat, by your pec, if we're dominated, or if that area is dominated in our throw, that's what we're trying to use to accelerate on the baseball or whatever's in our hand. So from here, if that's our goal, or if that's how our body organizes itself, what we're gonna do is want to initiate that first, and then that's gonna give us more time to get forward and get into that position here, where ultimately we have more forward torso flexion at release. Right, we're physically driving the movement with the torso. So that's going to cause us to use that um, at a more, at a higher or more maximal level. Whereas if you think about a hand dominated arm action, it's, it's fundamentally different what they're using to drive their movement, right? So instead of it being driven by the torso, by the lat, by the pack here, right? Instead, they're trying to move the hand actively as fast as possible. So they're not going to want to relax this extremity here and get that forward torso flexion, right? And that's not what they're trying to do, but instead they're trying to actively accelerate it from here. So it's gonna look more like this, right? Where they're still getting a little bit of that layback and a little bit of lat, right? But their goal is not to drive it with that area. It's to get this hand here and to move it as fast as possible. So by design, they're gonna be a little bit more rotational and not get quite as much of that forward torso flexion.